Hello and welcome to the AppSense Environment Manager Masterclass Series. This video is uh, video number one and it's concerning how to install the AppSense Management Suite, the architecture that you're going to need to enable you to do demos, proof of concepts. So without further ado, we shall move straight into the requirements that you're going to need for installing AppSense into a demo system. What we're going to need is we're going to need a Microsoft Active Directory and Domain Server. You're also going to need two servers for AppSense. You're going to need a AppSense management server and an AppSense personalization server. Um, these can be Windows 2003, 2008 R2 servers and recommended to use um, R2, uh, use the latest and greatest. You're also going to need to actually be able to show the concepts of how AppSense is working and typically you'll be using a Windows XP and or Windows 7 desktops. And obviously they need to be connected up to the domain with uh, your required GPOs and user accounts created, etc. on them. We're also going to need uh, an SQL database to install uh, the AppSense schemas and for the AppSense to save its personalization data too. Now you have a choice here, um, if you've got full-blown SQL then that's fine, but we can use SQL Express 2005 or 2008. Optional uh, things that you can have in there is terminal services or RDS, the remote desktop services, and of course you can have Citrix Zen app, Zen desktop, or VMView installed over there. So those are your main requirements that you require to install AppSense and to demonstrate its capabilities. For this series of videos, what we're going to actually concentrate on is combining everything into a few servers as possible. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the domain controller and SQL and the AppSense servers all on one machine. So you wouldn't normally do this in a live environment but it's fine for demos and proof of concepts etc. So I'm going to use a Windows 2003 R2 server and that's also going to be a domain controller with Active Directory, GPO etc. all installed configured with uh, DNS and DHCP servers on there as well. Um, I'm also going to make sure that Internet Information Server is installed and because it's 2008 and obviously it's going to be IIS 7. And we also need to make sure that in the preferences sections that you switched on uh, in the feature section 2008 that you have bits extensions enabled because we rely on that for AppSense. To run the consoles you're going to require .NET 3 or above so I'm going to use .NET 3.5 and I'm also going to use SQL Express 2008. And of course, you're going to need the AppSense software to be downloaded. I'm also going to install onto this server as well remote um, desktop services, terminal services, so that I can work all on one machine, build configurations, see how it all works without having to flip between machines, just to make life easier for myself. And it also shows the capabilities across multiple platforms. And then I'm going to have two other machines, an XP desktop and a Windows 7 desktop. Both of these have got Office 2007 installed and so has my domain controller actually got Office 2007 installed as well. So those two machines are what you'd actually be then using to actually test the software to see how the functionality of AppSense works. Okay, so in the previous slide we described the systems that I was going to use. So let me introduce you to my systems that I'm going to use for my demo POC environment. As you can see here, I have a virtual machine. This machine is my domain controller. I'm going to use this as my domain controller, my SQL server using SQL 2008 Express, and also as my AppSense management and personalization server. The machine itself is a Windows uh, 2008 R2, and I'm running it as 64-bit. Now, you can choose any virtualization system that you want, Citrix or Hyper-V, VirtualBox, and I'm using here VM Workstation. Choose whichever you feel best with. The machine I've got defined here is 2 gigs uh, memory. Um, I've assigned it 40 gigs of disk space, and it's all set up as a domain controller, and the actual domain is called appdemo.com. The name of the machine is appdemo.dc. You will see also that I've got it set up you know, in the services roles manager. Of course, my domain control services are sat here. It's also set as a DHCP server and a DNS server. And as I talked about before, optional, but I've got set up remote desktop services all configured and uh, authorized as well. Internet information services being IIS 7 on a 2008 box is set up configured as well. One thing I haven't done, which I'll show you because a lot of you may have missed this, especially in uh, 2008, is how do you get bits installed, background intelligence services, where well, you'll find it underneath features. Under features here, we can add features, and it's this little button here. So I'll just go ahead 
and add this role as it's going to be required later on and we'll just go and finish that all off there so while that's installing I'll show you my other servers that I've got my desktops I have a Windows 7 desktop that's here and I also have an XP desktop that's sat here and each of these machines is connected to the network and I have created users so the user that I will use is my finance user and I've given it a blank password to start off with and we'll see that these guys connect up now currently I have these set up using a mandatory profile um, and in later videos we'll talk about how to create these mandatory profiles especially in Windows 7 which can be fairly challenging and if we just log on to this guy here, the mandatory profile that I've set up here, I've, I've actually set it to be a blank and black screen with all of the features that I do not want enabled switched off. So we'll just wait for that to log on there. So here's my XP machine, all set up. And I have now also my background intelligence services installing on my domain controller and I have my Windows sub machine you can see here logged on with a mandatory profile with a blank background all the functionality stripped out and again we'll talk about how to do that at a later date so let's go back to my term, to my my domain controller and we can see that that's sat there and that's all installed excellent so my prerequisites just to go through it again active directory dhcp dns services i have remote desktop services installed so that i can actually do rdp testing um and i also have internet information services and we've just shown how to go through and install the background intelligence services bits i just have a quick look in my active directory that i have actually set up so in my active directory if we just go in and have a quick nosy in here we have demo users I've set so here's my app sense do, um, domain my app demo domain and my demo users my finance user set up here and just so we can see where the where the mandatory profiles have been configured if I go and look at my profiles here you can see that I'm picking a mandatory profile from the main uh, domain controller and I also have in here the standard profile for the XP and desktop machines so that concludes the quick go through of the of my demo setup for you um, you can replicate what I've got or you can make your own um, you can split out the individual servers it's just the way that I find it's easier to keep it on free machines okay so we've been through how my system's been set up uh, so let's now concentrate on how to get the AppSense software and how to install it so obviously we need the AppSense software it's always recommended that you go to the AppSense website uh, to grab the software so it's absence.com um, and where you find the software is under these products and I recommend that for beginners uh, new time users of AppSense go to AppSense management suite and here you have the ability here to try the software if you click try the software you'll be asked for your details to enable and create a my AppSense account now I've already logged on to the system before so if I just put in my details and nice cash in here and of my password and this will take me straight into myappsense.com where I can then get hold of all of the latest software installations so I'll log at this from software downloads now your interface may look slightly different me as in the member of AppSense I have more privileges on the website it, you will find a software download section and in the software download this is where you can go to actually download the the zip file now, AppSense is split into three components, the AppSense Management uh, Center, the Performance, the Application and the Environment Manager. Uh, each of these has a different version and are released at different stages during the year. However, I do recommend that you go and get the AppSense Management Suite. Uh, and this will give you all of the latest and greatest versions up to the current time that you're downloading. So, as a recommendation, always get the latest version off the AppSense website. So I've already got the software and I've downloaded it and I've installed it into my installation directory here on my domain controller. Now, I want to point you to the guide section and underneath the guide section you will find quite a few PDF files and the major one I want to show you is the AppSense Management Suite Architecture and Installation Guide. 
So I've got that open on my base machine here, um, and I do recommend that you read this uh, document or at least skim through it. It will go through absolutely everything you need to do and will answer quite a lot of your questions. For example, in the management center, how is it configured? What is the architecture? What's the protocols? What's the prerequisites? So everything I've been talking about, prerequisites, servers, communications, this is all contained in this documentation here. And there is even a complete installation guide on how to do absolutely everything that you need to do on an installation of AppSense, including upgrades and screenshots, step-by-step -step guide. So I strongly recommend that you take a look at that document. So let's now go back to my AppSense server slash domain controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually run the installation. I have all the prerequisites installed. So nice and simply, we're going to go and run the setup program. So I'm just going to run this through here. So AppSense installation is split into two major parts. One is the actual installation of the files. The second then is the configuration of the actual products that you've installed on here. So here we can see that the AppSense Management Suite installation has fired up. So it's a nice simple wizard interface. So we're just going to go through the actions. So we hit next. Here we'll be putting in our username. And fill in your details. Accept the terms and conditions. Of course, everybody reads these. And now you'll be asked for your license key. So if you do have a license key for AppSense, this is where you will add it. It comes in two parts, the serial number and the activation code. Or if you'd like to evaluate the product for 21 days, it has it automatically built into the installation. So just leave it set as I would like to evaluate this product tick box, which I'm going to do next. OK, we have two ways of installing AppSense. Um, standalone version means you do not get any of the management, the live updates, the configuration updates. Um, I don't recommend that you do that. I recommend that you go down the enterprise route and it gives you the full functionality of AppSense. So we're going to select enterprise. And we need this because we're going to be using AppSense personalization servers as well. So let's click next. And these are the major server configuration um, utilities that we're going to need. The management server, management center configuration, the personalization server configuration, and for performance manager, the central statistics server. So I'm going to leave all of these selected. Click next. It's going to do a quick verification. Now we see that I'm actually missing a couple of prerequisites. It's managed to find out I've got the Windows installer, Core XML, and .NET 3 and Internet Information Services, but I'm missing Visual C++ runtime for 2008 SP ones, and we can install these directly from the from the uh, wizard interface. So we just click on these to install these, and click onto the second one to install this one, and that's all of our prerequisites installed. So we can go next. Default installation directory. You can change that if you wish. I'm going to leave it as default and it's collected all the information it needs to know now to install the files and the files only onto your AppSense server. It's not going to configure them at this stage. So we click the install. And now the installation manager will carry on through and install all of your files that you selected. So here we can see that the AppSense management suite installation has finished and it's given us the finished dialog box and we also here have the ability to actually launch the configuration, the free configuration tools for the server's uh, connection to the SQL database and Internet Information Service interfaces. I'm just going to click finish here. And yes, it's just warning me that I haven't actually run these config tools. And we're going to do those in the next part of the demo. So just to show you what's happened there is if we go and have a look in uh, program files, we can see AppSense and we can see where the software has actually been installed. And if we go and have a look underneath programs and underneath AppSense, we will now see that we have the four major components of AppSense, Application Manager, Environment Manager, Performance Manager, and we also have the Management Center here. So at this stage, all AppSense has done is installed the software files onto your machine and given you the consoles. Um, so that ends part one of the masterclass of um, showing a demo system, how to configure a demo system, prerequisites, and install, getting and installing the AppSense software. 
part two of the masterclass will be involving how to actually configure the services for Internet Information Server and SQL. So please make sure that you check the part two of the masterclass.